Hello, I'm the critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Today we're going to look at a show that I like to call Ghostbusters. Actually, two shows, not just one. Yeah, contrary to the popular belief where there was just one Ghostbusters show ever, besides the extreme Ghostbusters, no. Two franchises with the same name. How is this possible? Let me explain. You see, around 1960, from what I could tell, Filmation made this live-action, almost Three Stooges, Tom and Jerry-ish slapstick show, but with a twist. Ghosts. And in the, and in the links below, I would try to find some films of, I would try to find some clips of it, either from other reviews or... Just something, so I don't leave you people high and dry. Which is why I probably won't be getting to Gregory Horror, because... I can't find any good clips. Some of them are either from Europe... They didn't even uh, release in the U.S., from what I could tell. The things that I found were pirated from the U.S. to the U.S. in English. But you could try to find them legally, but it's very, very hard. It's like trying to get the original classic 60s Doctor Who, the first season. You ain't gonna find that. It's like a hidden gem. Like the very first episode, An Unearthly Child, never gonna find it. Ever. Just hidden under that all that Doctor Who stuff unless they release it. Like they did in 2012 for... The 50th anniversary for Doctor Who, I guess. <coughs> so I just have to wait another year for that to happen. Why am I talking about Ghostbusters? I was going to talk about Gregory Horror, but like I said, I couldn't find it. So instead, we're going to talk about Filmations and Deke Entertainment's Ghostbusters. Now, why did I say it like that? Because there were actually two. Like I was trying to say earlier... The 1968 one was a live-action show that essentially had nothing to do with Ghostbusters. They wrote in a red 40s jalopy thing. They had a camera thing that shot ghosts. Yeah, the ghosts were actually real people. They just called them ghosts. When they were basically no different from villains. And they didn't have a trap. They basically... I'm, I'm not going to say they were ghost police, because that would mean they actually did something important. And they also had a giant... They also had a monkey in a... A man in a monkey suit. A Georgie, I think her name was, or something like that. Insert it joke here, I guess. I think. Now, the weird thing about this is... They would always get their... Missions from the Chief. Who never had a voice. Kind of like how Sam and Max had a boss who never was seen on the show. It was just something that happened. But here's the weird thing. He would always get blown up by like some kind of dynamite. Kind of like in the 60s show. Where Batman just can't get rid of that bat bomb, I guess. Some days you can't rid get rid of a bomb. That one. Oh, I miss that show. I would have loved it if they, if they released it on DVD. But I'm rambling now. Let's get to the reason why you did come. This is really hard because it really wasn't interacting. All I'm going to say is don't watch the live action show. Because I forget almost everything about it. I'll try to remember, but... It was kind of forgettable. When it started to get liking was when they got it to cartoon. Because it was kind of, it kind of reminded me of Princess Bride, where they were overactive cartoons. But here's the thing. They were overactive cartoons, but they did it painfully wrong. Like, it was so high, you think the animation was supposed to do this, but... This was a live action show and it was just, it was a big mess. 
So why did so why did two companies have Ghostbusters? Well, because of this one making this. And then and then Columbus Pictures buying the rights to Ghostbusters making his 1988 film. Ghostbusters of the same name. And then when their movies were made, they made a spin-off. Cartoons, of course. So technically, they still technically had the Ghostbusters. They still had the rights to the Ghostbusters. So how did Deke get around this? They called them the real Ghostbusters. Which they technically had the rights to because they somehow tricked them into... There's like a, a behind-the-scenes thing. I'll like try to find that. But I'll try to explain it here as best as I can. Where essentially what they did was trick them out of their own rights, technically. They got half the rights. So what they have to do, they had to call it the real Ghostbusters. Well, the Ghostbuster, the Filmation Ghostbusters basically faded to obscurity because of the more popular Ghostbusters film, which was a block success. And had a sequel on the way that would make almost everybody disappointed. Not me, though. Still love that movie. So, when did this rivalry end? Well, if you ask me, the rivalry technically ended in 1988 when Filmation's Ghostbusters basically fade into obscurity, into obscure, and never found again ish. Because the success of the other Ghostbusters was too much. So basically, from what I could tell, Filmation had to, had to sign for bankruptcy, I guess. And they just faded to obscurity. Into obscure. But getting off that topic, they also made the extreme Ghostbusters. Which was a 90s version of all the extreme shows that were on. Like Quack Pack, Goof Troop, ish. You know, those extreme shows. Go watch the Nostalgia Critics 90s, 90s things to get what I mean. It is ungodly funny. I would show clips, but I can't because I don't know how. Hey, Joe B. Yeah, I'm shouting out to you because I'm, because I'm helpful. Please. Agree to me, please. Because I need help with some things. Please. Thank you. So to make a long story slightly less long. Basically, Ghostbusters 1 and the Filmations... Faded, in to speak. I mean, they made a cartoon. But that only lasted one season. Technically two... But it was all wrapped up in one DVD, so it was technically one season, just in two parts. With 13 episodes, so yeah. I mean, the show sh showed it could do things, but... It wasn't like the live-action one where it attempted... Weird and odd humor that wouldn't fit sometimes. But somehow made it work. So what's the lesson here today? Well, the lesson here is, if you're going to make an idea, make sure it's original. I'm the critic. I remember it. So you don't have to. Bye.